Hey guys, welcome to System Test 27. So, today we're going to be taking care of a couple of video requests that I've gotten over the past couple months. And I honestly don't remember if these came from two separate people or if it was the same person who requested that I do the Halon system and the water flow switch. But regardless, we're going to take care of those two today. So, to kind of tie the water flow switch and the Halon system together, um, the I don't know, theme, I guess you could say, of this system test is going to be flow switches. And although the standard fire sprinkler water flow switch that um, you guys have seen before is more commonly known, believe it or not, the Halon system also does have a type of flow switch installed. So let's take a look. As I mentioned, this is an example of the standard uh, fire sprinkler water flow switch that we're all used to seeing. Uh, it's very simple. There's a paddle that extends into this T connection right here from the device and when the water begins to flow through the pipe it puts pressure on that paddle which then through a lever activates a switch within the device. Now on the other hand this big red device that's sandwiched between the pull station for the Halon system and the second DMP keypad this is pretty much the equivalent of a flow switch for a Halon system. The difference is that since Halon is not a liquid, um, at least not in its normal form that it's used for in fire suppression, um, it cannot use a paddle in order to detect if the uh, agent is flowing through the pipe. Instead, at the bottom of this unit, there is a uh, threaded opening for a hose. And unfortunately, I don't have the hose that went uh, originally with this system and even if I did it would be kind of in the way with how this pull station is mounted but this hose would run between this outlet port on the actuator down here and would run up through a coupling into this unit and now this is a pneumatic switch which means that if there's sufficient pressure coming into this inlet port here that will activate the switch within the device and you'll see this little lever pop up like that. On the interior of this is actually a standard, uh, I think it's like a 20 amp household, 30 amps, um, household light switch. So there's a diaphragm that will push up on that switch and that will cause the Halon system to go into alarm if the Halon is either manually activated by pulling the pin or a chain system or something like that, or if there is an accidental discharge of Halon due to the actuator failing or some sort of other extreme circumstance. So I'm going to be activating both of these devices today and going in the order that would probably be most likely if there were actually a fire, starting off with the Halon system uh, and then if the fire were not controlled by the Halon system, moving on to the sprinkler system. But before we get to that, let's take a look at the devices that are installed on the remainder of the system. So for the Halon system notification appliances, we have a Ansel 57549 bell on the left, and over on the right, there is a Federal Signal 4050D with a Fiquench rebranded uh, model 20048 Halon strobe. For the SXL system devices, we have a Wheelock WMT24 uh, weatherproof remote strobe along with a Gentex GX90-4W mini horn. So like I said earlier, we're going to start things off uh, in the order of how I think they would really play out uh, if there were to be a fire in the space that's protected by the Halon system. And so I'm going to go ahead and activate this flow switch. Um, with the way I have this mounted, I actually have to open up the pull station to get to it, and then I'm going to use this, uh, whatever you call this tool. I don't know what it's actually used for, I think it's used at like uh, amusement parks to unlock the ride seats if they get stuck, but anyways, um, I'm going to use this tool to reach in there and put pressure on the diaphragm, and that's going to activate the switch inside, and you're going to see everything drop straight into a full alarm as if this... Uh, Halon was manually activated. So, grab my keys. Alright, 
Here we go. So as you can see, we got all the alarm conditions on the panel. Um, I went ahead and silenced that. You can see the keypads lit up, and then we still have the strobe on the halon horn flashing. Alright, so now we're going to go ahead with the flow switch, and I've already taken the cover off so I can get to the lever to test it. So, here we go. So we're going to get things reset starting over here with the Halon system. Moving over, we have the standard fire alarm system. And lastly, we'll reset the DMP system, and you'll be able to see all the alarms uh, that were created scrolling through on the LCD. So we have fire alarm zone 4 that's tied into the standard uh, SXL panel. This Halon system alarm is the monitoring zone for the Halon system. And the riser 12 alarm on 505 is the monitoring zone for the fire riser. So now we can go ahead and reset all of these. And now we're back to normal. So that about wraps it up for this video. And uh, I'm really good at remembering uh, the actual requests, but I'm terrible at remembering who actually did the requesting. So um, I hope whoever requested this video, uh, or, or the two people as I mentioned earlier, uh, I hope that was what you were looking for. And then on the same kind of note, I uh, want to mention Another request that I know is floating out there, um, somebody, probably three or four months ago now, requested that I do a Simplex 9838 and Simplex 9806s on the uh, strobe and light plates I have, the 2903 series plates, and uh, I told them that I would be doing it after this test, and in the meantime between uh, the last system test and this test, 
I've set that system up a couple times and I still can't get it to where it'll operate really smoothly um, with my SXL panel. There's something about those two devices that the panel doesn't agree with and the odd thing is I've run them both separately um, a bunch of times. I run them on separate NACs and uh, it doesn't exceed the current or anything but the panel just doesn't seem to like them both when they're connected. So gonna have to put that on hold for a little while at least. I might try to wire in like an aux power supply or something to serve those two horns um, so I don't have to worry about inflicting any damage on my panel. Um, I don't think it would anyways but if it's gonna show a trouble on the next I, I power it back off. I don't want to mess with it. So um, on that note thank you guys for watching and a sneak peek of next system test, system test 28. Um, it's probably going to be a quicker turnaround between this test and next test. I'll probably have the next one out in two or three weeks because I already have everything all together ready for it. But that test is going to feature a brand new Wheelock LED exceeder. Uh, at least one. I don't know if I'll have any others by that point. But we'll see. So thank you guys again for watching.